Boosters for us that do uh, are tremendously generous, just like our other uh, other folks that have um, uh, gave us gifts towards this facility. But yeah, it's going to be fantastic. It's long overdue. You know where we are right now is the last uh, med uh, athletic facility that we have built on campus. So uh, this is long overdue. It's going to be it's going to be great for uh, basketball, volleyball, wrestling, especially, but all our other sports because the uh, the weight room is going to be about three times what we have right now. Uh, the training room is going to be over there for a better treatment. Uh, got a rehab, rehab uh, astroturf out out the side, mm -hmm. and then obviously the wrestling room. We've got uh, three 42, 42 uh, feet uh, diameter mats, uh, three of them in there, which is unbelievable, uh, spacious compared to what we have right now. Sure. Coach's offices, locker rooms, uh, it's going to be fantastic. Yeah, it's going to be really help for this program as we look right now. Jack Janda, the redshirt sophomore from Haddon Township, New Jersey, for Drexel against Lucas White of AU, of course, White coming off a win last time against Virginia against Griffin Gamble, the redshirt sophomore from O'Fallon, Illinois. Now, Billy, one thing I want to ask you, I guess, when is the groundbreaking on the Meltzer Center coming up? Yeah, that's uh, coming up quickly on the uh, 1st of March at uh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. It's, uh, it's We're working on the uh, the ceremony right now, but it's really going to be, it's going to be fantastic and, and real special for the whole community. Um, uh, you know, I would I would hit with uh, President Burrow all the time. I tell her I have I have my shovel in the back of my car at all times. So do you have your hard hat? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> a little miner's light and everything. So I'm ready to start uh, start breaking ground anytime we can. But yeah, our, our, the the ceremony is going to be um, uh, first of March, four o'clock in the afternoon. It's uh, yeah, it's going to be a special day. Before we get back into questions about the Meltzer Center, of course, a little exchange there. Of course, I think most people that follow American know that wrestling deep in your heart, former wrestler, former wrestler coach as well. And in this one, what have you seen so far between Jan and White here? Hi, I mean, uh, just uh, both both seem to be feeling each other out a little bit at the beginning of the match here. Um, and, uh, you know, like I say, for, for wrestling, especially all sports, but wrestling especially, you, you got to start on time, right? So uh, both these guys look like they're that they uh, are, are getting after it right away. Well, it's funny, and I always uh, we always joke with Jason a little bit. I can see, of course, he did the coaching stint uh, in between uh, before Jason Borelli during the COVID year, and when he looks at Lucas White, has that jujitsu background, he kind of yeah. a little bit clingy, a little bit high sometimes. I can almost see Jason get a little bit nervy. Yeah. Do you get that as an old uh, wrestler, wrestling oh, coach? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch him? yeah he, he's, uh, he's tough on top, but he gets high a lot, uh, which is good for him i mean that's the way he, that's the way he wrestles like you say from the jujitsu jiu background but uh but, but uh as a, a purist i guess the guy rode on on top a lot uh, uh yeah he does it does get you a little nervous every once in a while but he he certainly knows how to do it yeah white on the season having a pretty good campaign 21 and 29 on the season as we get close to the end of our period here and again lucas white one of the guys kind of in the middle of this uh, American University wrestling class. And one thing I think that has to be talked about when you talk about the Meltzer Center is with Jason Borelli, the head coach here, again, kind of building this team up when the Meltzer Center is ready to go. It's going to be such a boon, I think, to Absolutely. this wrestling program. Correct, Billy? Yeah, it is. And it's, you know, I, I know Jason, like all coaches, is, a, is a, um, impatient, right? You want to, want to get to a program and get, win right away. Um, so he, he's fantastic, pushing it really hard. But I always tell him, don't, it's gonna, you know, it take a few years. You're bringing in your own guys, your your philosophy, you know, how you wrestle, how you manage a match, and all that. So uh, he's got a great staff, great kids on the team. So I, I've got, uh, I got no worries that we're gonna be, we're gonna be doing really well here soon. And staying with Coach Borelli, obviously you were integral in hiring him as the coach. What were some of the intangibles you saw with Jason and knew you knew he could be a successful wrestling coach here at American? Yeah, well, I've known Jason for um, when we hired, when I hired him about 12 years, 10, 12 years already. He uh, he was actually we, the National Wrestling Coach Association has a mentor, 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 mentor uh, program um, with administrators and, and young coaches. So I was actually his mentor for a year, which was great. So I got to know him. That was about 10 years ago, maybe. And then uh, and then when I was on the, the NCAA wrestling committee, it was the chair of the committee, um, Jason came on probably when I still, my last two years or so as one of the coach uh, members of the committee. So got to know him really, really well then because um, that's a lot of work every year doing the, doing the, the committee and the, running the tournament and seeds and selections and all that. So got to know him really well. So... Uh, when the time came for another coach, timing was great. He was leaving uh, Stanford. Um, 
So uh, we went through the process, and knowing he was the guy I really wanted to take a serious look at, and we hired him. I just told him he better not go back to Stanford or anything anytime <laughs> soon. But, but um, no, we're really, really happy. Uh, he, like I said, he's got a great, great staff. They're very knowledgeable uh, about wrestling, great coaches, but more importantly, they're, they're great role models for our, our young student athletes. So, um, yeah, we're, uh, we're excited. Future's bright for AU wrestling, no doubt. Billy, one more about Coach Pirelli before we get back into the Meltzer Center. And, of course, our match here is still 0-0 zero, zero between right. Jack Janda and Lucas White as Janda looking to break down. But we have the stalling oh, warning. Stall on top, yeah. So we'll bring him back in. But when it comes to Coach Pirelli, one thing that struck me is how willing he is to promote his program, be it with social media, which, of course, is blown up. I know a, a, a guy who's been experienced like you, it's tough to foresee what we have come to with social media being the way it is now. Yeah. But, again, a guy that's get out there, especially in a D.C. market where you have to promote yourself a little bit, how good has it been to have a guy like that who's willing to do that? Yeah, it's great. You, you have to, you know. Um, some co coaches are more comfortable than others. But, um, but you know, it's not like an old guy saying nowadays, but in, <laughs> <laughs> the way things are now, you have, you have to, you know, you have to promote your program and social media is where, you know, all recruits are looking. So, um, that was nice. Escape there by White right at short time as White has the one-point lead now. Of course, the riding time in Janda's favor after that really hard ride as Janda fixes the headgear and he will go to the third period. So, quickly before we get back into our wrestling, Billy, we kind of talked about some of the things there. I think one that you really brought up and were really excited about is the new competition area for the program. How big of a deal is that for yeah. a program to have that space, again, to kind of show their wares? Yeah, it's going to be great. It's a, um, a smaller arena than this, um, uh, actually named after our, our late volleyball coach, uh, Barry Goldberg, which is fantastic. But it's, um, it's going to be volleyball's practice facility. Also, when you go perpendicular, and that will be... Um, uh, able to have both basketball teams practicing with a divider in there and then we'll use it also for the competition for volleyball and for wrestling so um, it's going to be really neat it's smaller more intimate than this than this big arena which this is great with our new mats and everything it's a great setup but we'll be able to do that over there and keep uh, the crowd a little bit closer and hopefully a little bit louder too yeah, I know that's one thing sometimes always, folks, it, it becomes, and I know that you, you, as many of the d administrative things you've done, a lot of people have given Baylor basketball that really kind of vote of confidence. They went a little small with their arena, right. but it's full and all full of energy yeah. throughout the time. As right now, full of energy, it's Lucas White trying to find some points. Keep them down. It's looking good here. Oh. Still no points on the board for Janda. White trying to keep him down. Look where you are, good. What are you thinking right now if you're Lucas White holding on to this one point lead? Yeah, he's looking tough there. He's got to, um, yeah, right here off the whistle, we got to be, be hard right away. Don't let, uh, get any emotion and. So White still with the one-point lead, but of course the riding time advantage to Janda. Yeah. So he could be headed to sudden victory. Yeah, either way it's going to be, right? Are you going to get paid overtime for this? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll see. I'll have to talk to, talk to our, our budget office. That's right. No, they're, yeah, they're going to pay me to get off. That's right, more. We're so yeah, glad. Here. So glad to get a chance to talk to you, Billy, and of course talking about the Meltzer Center and Again, as we're going to focus on wrestling, I think, through this one, as we will. A little free wrestling. So we will get the Southern victory with the one point coming on with the riding time advantage. And now the officials going over to make sure everything's set right as they reset the riding time. When you would get into a extra time, what was your thinking? Uh, if I was an extra time, I was happy I hadn't lost already. So, uh, <laughs> no, I guess once you get in overtime, you know, uh, I, I really like to keep the tempo up. You know, get, get, hopefully he's gonna be a little tired going to overtime, and um, 
I wanted to make sure I got right in, right in his face and you know, kept the tempo up and try to wear him down as well. Chanda rolls through. Still no points awarded. He's smart. Can Janda get behind yeah, White trying like to hold tough? There you go. Come, come back to that. And Janda still has that leg. A step right there. Can he get him? No. Can't break that. Try yeah. to have his teammates here behind us telling him what to do. <laughs> And no, 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 no. There it is. So Janda with a good match. Sudden victory win. Looked like White had him for a second, but Janda able to go ahead and get the four to one victory. So we will move on to the 184s, but of course, we'll take a quick 